Shut up and sit down. Hey everybody, Carl Groves here. Just wanted to give you a shout. I found something interesting the other day uh, perusing my web, the website for my favorite friends here, Accessibility, um, because I, I, I saw some things that really sort of were contradictory. Uh, so here's the Accessibility homepage. Uh, the Accessibility homepage says the number one fully automated web accessibility solution for ADA and WCAG compliance. It says add a single line of code for 24-7 automated compliance. Uh, further down, protect your business from lawsuits. It works automatically. And they say, they, how do we protect you from litigation? They will give you automated compliance. And we're compliance uh, monitoring, effortless process of compliance comes with us. They mentioned WCAG 2.1, ADA Title 3, Section 508, and EN 301-549. So let's talk a little bit about these, especially ADA Title III, Section 508, and EN 301-549. The short answer to this, and I'm happy to, uh, to help you understand this if anybody wants to know, uh, the short answer to that, uh, that uh, what these uh, standards are, what these regulations are with respect to compliance is WCAG. Essentially, um, ADA Title III, sort of subtly references uh, WCAG uh, in their in the DOJ's support documentation and, and references. Uh, Section 508 EN 301 549 do explicitly reference WCAG to, uh, WCAG to level AA. So uh, they're saying, and and I think it's smart, that the that, that basically you're going to comply with WCAG by adding accessibility. Totally awesome. Let's talk a little bit though about what actual compliance with WCAG means. Uh, in the WCAG standard itself, uh, there's some por important distinctions that you really do want to be made aware of. Uh, and so here in the understanding conformance document, they say all WCAG success criteria are written as testable criteria for objectively determining if content satisfies them. Uh, so there you go. Now, another further statement that you need to pay attention to, conformance to a standard means that you meet or satisfy the requirements of the standard. In WCAG, the requirements are the success criteria. To conform to WCAG, you need to satisfy the success criteria. That is, there's no content which violates the success criteria. Now, this is really important. Uh, another note that's worth mentioning is here under conformance level. Uh, so for level A conformance, which is the minimum level of conformance, the web page satisfies all of the level A success criteria or a conforming alternate version is provided if you're going to complain, com <laughs> if you're going to uh, claim level A conformance. For level AA conformance, the web page satisfies all the level A and level AA success criteria or a level AA conforming alternative is provided. Uh, in other words, it's really important to note that this conformance is at the web page level. A conforming web page is one which satisfies all of the requirements for that stated level and therefore a conforming website will satisfy that by virtue of having all web pages of the site meet the sta stated success criteria. To be clear, the converse is also true. Not meeting one or more of the success criteria for your stated level of conformance means that the page and therefore the site is not compliant. So why do I bring this up? Well, I wanted to bring this up for a number of reasons, and I wanted to also mention while we're here that today is December 8th, 2020, just in case things mysteriously change. Um, and a couple of things that I do want to mention here are a couple of statements here. Okay, and so here's our here's here's the accessibility uh, terms of service. 
This is the terms of service. This is the agreement between the user, the customer of Accessibility and of course, Accessibility. Uh, so please do, if you are ever contemplating being a customer, read this. There's a couple of things that you wanna pay attention to. And one of the things to pay attention to is that, uh, is that the functionality of the Accessibility Systems requires that the licensee website in which they are embedded be websites based solely on HTML files and tags and that the source code be written according to the standard of the World Wide Web Consortium without any errors or validation warnings in W3C's troubleshooting inspections. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, this is a product, this is the, uh, this is the validator. This is the W3C's validator. This is the, this is the uh, inspection tool that's being referenced in the Accessibility Terms of Use. And so let's take a look at some of the statistics. Uh, and I wanted to give Michael Cooper a shout out for, for uh, providing these statistics. These statistics um, are, are reset whenever the service is updated or, or, uh, or rebooted or redeployed or anything like that. But, the, uh, but it is uh, uh, important to note that there currently is, uh, right now, today, 188,000, 189,000 uh, submissions so far via the GET and then uh, a total number of input based or post based that are 91,000. So you we're well into the statistically significant uh, numbers here for this. And I wanna bring you over to this line here, number of documents with errors. That is 77% here. The number of documents with warnings, 77%. So in other words, Accessibility off the bat is disclaiming any uh, promise to, uh, to bring into compliance basically 77% of pages. Or put another way, 77% of pages are not, uh, are not gonna be uh, able to, to uh, be fixed by Accessibility based on their own statements. Another example by uh, another example in their terms here. It says, by way of example, accessibility systems do not support other components such as Canvas, SVG, or Flash. Uh, elsewhere, they do mention uh, PDF as well. So, if you have Canvas, Flash, or SVG, or uh, frankly speaking, any content or interactivity in PDF or uh, Silverlight or anything like the Java applets, any of that stuff that's not HTML, they are not going to promise to uh, automatically fix your stuff. Okay, so that's a problem. Uh, furthermore, let's take a look at their claim about 100%. So the company does not undertake that the licensee website will be 100% accessible at any given moment. And they say, owing to factors such as licensee changes made to the licensee website, issues originating in the <laughs> licensee website, or limitations stemming from technological reasons. So they're saying right here, despite the fact that their marketing claims talk about automated conformance, they do not undertake that the licensee website will be 100% accessible. Uh, it does not, they also say they do not remediate PDF files or create subtitles for videos. For those who don't understand WCAG, uh, creating subtitles for videos is a level A requirement. And as we saw in the W3C documentation, the, uh, uh, the uh, conformance to level A is the minimum. So right here, what they're saying to you, if you're not able to put it all together, is that, uh, is that they're gonna claim that they're complying, that they're causing your compliance here, or they're even gonna say that there's a little check mark here, it says it's the only automated solution, WCAG 2.1, so on and so forth, highest success rate, and yet their terms of service, the legal statement, the legal promise that they're making is that they're not 
going to promise 100% uh, compliance and that if you're not valid HTML and you have and and if you have SVG PDF video flash or canvas on your site all bets are off so I want to ask you a question is all of the markup on your site 100% valid do you have PDF do you have SVG SVG icons do you have videos do you have canvas if you have any of these things well you're definitely not going to get any coverage from accessibility